Well, an update now on the looming UPS strike as talks break down between the carrier and its workers' union. UPS saying it will soon begin training non-union employees to jump in if there is a strike. So let's bring in New York Post reporter and News Nation business contributor Lydia Moynihan. So, I mean, we already know there are 30,000 UPS employees in Chicago alone. That's like a small little city. Uh, small and little. There you go. You know, those, <laughs> those words are so different. But you know what I'm saying? I'm emphasizing. You're getting the point across. The point is, uh, yeah, the impact would be huge if the unions can't uh, get, get with them. It, it absolutely would. I mean, we're talking about basically 6% of the U.S. GDP here. Uh, estimates that it, it's a 10-day strike. It could cost $7 billion. They deliver 25 million packages a day. I'm just throwing big numbers out there to show how significant this is. But um, what they're trying to do it, to get ahead of it, uh, again, we just have a few more weeks. They're threatening to strike at the end of the month, um, is to train people who are non-union members to fill in if they actually go ahead and strike. But I think everyone realizes this is just sort of a drop in the bucket. It's great to have a few people fill in, but you're not going to mitigate really the vastness of what UPS does. Small businesses, other sized businesses looking at alternative alternatives to UPS as well. FedEx, the U.S. Postal Service, if, if this happens. But I think if it happens, it's going to be disastrous. And, um, you know, it's, it's just interesting. People have gotten to shopping on e-commerce and online so much more since the pandemic. And I think it would, depending on how long it is, it might kind of train us out of doing that. Train us. Sure. I don't know. We might get used to it, but I don't know. Uh, what is the U UPS union fighting for exactly? Uh, obviously, the staff wants more money. Well, that, that is kind of the, the gist of it. Uh, you, you hit it on the head. But I, I think it's interesting because they finally have gotten some concessions. For a long time, they didn't have air conditioning in the cars. Uh, so that is a step forward. They at least have secured that. What they really want is to make sure that everyone is paid on the same pay scale. Right now, there's a two-tiered pay scale where people who are part-time paid much less than those who are full-time. They're also arguing for more complete health benefits um, and, and help with their pension plan as well. Yeah, the typical uh, arguments or the typical needs uh, that they want. Uh, real quickly now, I, I know we're almost out of time, but just in terms of the impacts from Hollywood and seeing uh, the city shut down over the SAG strike, adding to the writer's strike, obviously this is going to create ripple effects in other industries. Are we seeing uh, production halted yet? I mean, further. We, really. we are. It's, yes, it's, it's pretty dramatic. We've seen in just a few days since they went on strike, we're seeing big blockbuster titles that have already stopped production. Gladiator 2, Deadpool, another Mission Impossible that they're working on on the streaming side, Stranger Things. So pretty much every project that they've been working on is halted. The one notable exception is in England. Uh, most of those actors are not part of the SAG-AFTRA, so they have continued shooting Game of Thrones. But we're looking at basically new content could be halted for months. A lot of people close to the studio expect for these strikes to go on um, until potentially October. October. Yeah, and there are some saying that the industry won't recover until 2025. Uh, we'll hope that's wrong. Thank you so they much. They do. Lydia. We will have more reality shows. Those those are still coming. Unscripted. Those people are not part of SAG-AFTRA. That's true. And that might be a whole new world. All right. Love your pink today and love the conversation. Thanks so much. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.